What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Now I'm back after a long break, so this video is going to include multiple workout videos and it's mostly focusing on the front squat. Now I also want to have an informative component to this and not just talk about my own goals. So here what I want to talk about is lower back positioning or butt wink preventing it in the bottom of a squat to keep your spine neutral. Now, a lot of times I still see it today, even though I've had multiple videos on this, that people attribute this to hamstring flexibility. And you'll be able to see in this video that I have nearly no butt wink, possibly no butt wink, but if it is, if I have any, it's very minimal. However, I did not do anything to stretch my hamstrings because the key is ankle mobility or ankle flexibility to be able to dorsiflex at the ankle so that you can get your knees far forward. So I think that there are two extremes in my opinion that people approach this is that they either attribute it to hamstring flexibility and they think that they can you know, work on that until it's finally fixed or they go the other way and they say well it's all genetic and you know with the bar has to be over your midfoot and there's just absolutely nothing you can do about it and that is just not accurate either. So it's really a combination. Yes it's genetic in terms of your actual hip structure, your hip morphology is the problem. And that's because your hamstrings, of course, they're a biarticular muscle if you want to be technical. Basically just means it uh, contributes to knee flexion and then also hip extension. So the problem is it's not your hamstring flexibility because yes, you're flexing at the hips to the uh, complete end range of motion, in most cases at least, but the problem is you're also flexing at the knee. So that creates some slack. And an easy way to think about this is to just think about trying to touch your toes and then you all of a sudden just bend your knees and all of a sudden you feel the, the slack on your hamstrings start to increase. And that's what kind of amazes me is that this myth persists despite the fact that I've never heard of anybody feeling a complete stretch in the bottom of a squat. So that's why to me that's just perplexing. But the solution here is to just, once again, let your knees track further forward so that then your torso is more upright, so that then you can squat deeper without as much uh, hip flexion as you would require if you did have a lot of forward lean combined with a deep squat. Also an underrated aspect is that a lot of time your clothing actually impacts your perception of butt wink as they call it. Here I'm showing a clip of Jesse Norris where he's squatting and it looks like the butt wink's horrible because his, you know, his hips are shooting up under him and it looks like he's completely losing all tightness. However, if you see him squat in a singlet warming up for a meet, you can actually see his lumbar positioning is very good, especially given the amount of forward lean he has. You know, for a low bar squat, it's pretty much a given that you're going to have some noticeable butt wink, but it's definitely not a big deal for him. And then also you can see in my squat here, that I guarantee these are the same styles of squat in terms of my stance width, yet you can see with the pants on, I call it pant induced butt wink, where you see it pulls on your uh, legs actually, and then it makes it look way worse of an issue than it is. So as much as that seems like a random thing to even talk about, I've seen so many people think they have problems when in reality it is just their perception, whether it be the camera angle or the clothing they're wearing, that alters how you can actually see your body positioning in reality. So now I also want to talk about the fact that I'm doing some explosive training, which I've hinted at for a long time now. And unfortunately, since I injured my knee, I actually am still not able to really go all out with this. And you can tell that I'm doing these box jumps and doing them with a pause in between the lowering phase and the actual jumping. And that's just to reduce the amount of stress reflex I'm using so I'm not jumping quite as high. I'm intentionally limiting performance essentially. And I want to make it clear that I'm not doing this, you know, thinking I'm going to be some amazing jumper to where it's notable on YouTube. Yeah, I know there's some crazy videos out there. I'm just doing it for my own more of a holistic approach to my training and to see if it has any positive effect on my lifting itself as well as my goal is to eventually be able to dunk again, which I have an old video of myself doing that. I believe it's called Athletic Aesthetic, and it's a 410 pound, 10 rep max squat, and then I dunk successfully, and I'm five foot seven, by the way, for people wondering. So that was a level of athleticism, though, that I honestly don't think I have anymore, because the problem is that, you know, I've been so far removed from my days where I did long jump in the past, 
which I was never amazing at, but my standing vertical was actually really solid, as well as my broad jump. I was one of those more explosive guys who had no real top end speed. But anyways, back to the lifting. You can see here with these pause front squats that I really do a great job here of maintaining tightness all throughout my lower back, and I even do a good job of controlling my knee position on the way up. Now, Greg Knuckles has written a lot about shifting your knees forward when, uh, whenever you possibly can. So typically, you get the stretch reflex. Even on a pause squat, you still bounce kind of out of it. You can't shift your knees forward immediately, but then once you get to that sticking point, try to shift forward. So that's something that I've definitely used for front squatting specifically. I don't necessarily really do it for low bar, but for front squats, that is a cue that helps me tremendously. And I think Dan Green also mentions this cue as well. So it's probably pretty good if Dan Green supports it. But anyways, with these sumo deadlifts, look at my uh, shin angle here. You see that it's very positive and not at all a vertical shin angle that you typically see recommended almost universally across all deadlifting styles. And I do this simply because I am way stronger with this forward knee position. That's something that took me months to really fully understand that that is my strongest position. It took a lot of experimenting and it's not something that I necessarily recommend for everybody. It's really one of those oddities that's taken me repetition after repetition to fully learn. And that's one of the reasons why I've held off on making sumo deadlift technique videos just yet. Because I feel like I'm just now mastering my... Yeah, I hit him with the Pill Cosby treatment. We're here now. Oh, what a pity if it's all a lie. Still, I'm sure that you can rock the cynics if you try. Everything you do is kind of for the check, and not to mention you're shorter than me. Little bitch boy. Here we come, Johnny. Blah, blah does not include me in the fake 90 series. I'm gonna sue the fuck out of you. Huh? Whoa. Wake the fuck up, Johnny. We're gonna go live. I can tell by the night tales and all the dry wheels and all the long roads and all my ideas before the cold rolls. How we came up. I'm living in that 21st century, doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody ever seen. Do it, scream from the haters. Got a nice ring to it. I guess every superhero need his theme music. No one man to have all that power. The clock's ticking, I just count the hours. Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the power. Kill them, pump that. The world's ours. Come on, Johnny. Yes. You can see I paused this video to show my squat depth was probably a little bit high, but it's definitely not as high as it appeared based on that camera angle because that high up and back camera angle is notoriously horrible for seeing squat depth. It'll always make your hips look significantly higher than they are in relation to your knee. And combining that with very baggy shorts was probably not the best decision for me. But overall, it was close enough to parallel. You know, probably was not convincingly below parallel, but it was good enough for me, especially when we're looking at an exercise I'm just using as a tool to build up a base to get into the exercise I actually care about, which is, of course, only the powerlifting style squat. And that's actually what I want to talk about here, which is how amazing it felt to come back to low bar squatting and immediately be able to squat 500 pounds again. Now, I know that seems like a small feat, but for myself, that was a huge deal because it's been so long since I've squatted 500 pounds. And, you know, honestly, I, I was as emotionally charged as probably I've ever been since hurting my knee in terms of excitement because, you know, the squat is really the lift that got me into powerlifting. That's why I love powerlifting. As much as, you know, I want to pull a sumo deadlift record, 
which by the way, I'm going for the tested record now, since the untested one, I'll put a link in the description, was absolutely obliterated by a Russian who pulled like 760 at 165 pounds. But anyways, back to my point, that the squat was always the reason why I got into powerlifting. For me, it is by far the most fun lift. Also, I have a huge announcement that I am taking 10 people in for online coaching, which has been the goal of this channel since day one, to eventually get into that. So there'll be a link in the description on the directions if you're interested in that. And it will be prioritized based on the price that you are willing to pay for the two month period to sort that out and prioritize who's willing to pay more, who values it more, to decide who I should give my time and full attention to. What's up guys, I'm going to end this video with measuring my standing broad jump or my horizontal leap. So my goal is to get somewhere near 10 feet. So as long as I break nine feet, that's gonna be my bare minimum. If I get less than that, you're probably not gonna see this video. My goal is to actually measure uh, myself again after more of this jump training and hopefully to eventually break 10 feet. Yeah! I think I got, oh man, that's super close. Let's look. That is nine feet. And it looks, man, that right foot's pushing it. But it looks to me... Man, fuck the shooting star. Biggie died, they shot a star. Who you know when West LA? Bring that ruckus to M.A. Jeez. Wow, a full squat jerk just to do it in style. That surely is enough for gold. Are you recording? Yeah, now. Little big boy.